I see this virus. Yeah, it's it's a virus. Yeah, yeah, it's got RNA and it knows how to get inside your DNA. I, I get that. But you know what it really is to me? It's an invader from space. Okay. No, it's not actually, it's not actually from space. But imagine if we did have an invader from space that threatened all of humanity. We would need a way for all of us to get together, put down your swords, put down your against each other, put down your differences, because in this moment, we are all the same. The tribalism that separates us, if we can't ever get rid of it, let's at least let's at least combine that tribalism to turn all of humans into one tribe to fight the one the one enemy. And so, uh, so for me, this is a practice run. If the day ever comes where hostile aliens come to try to take over Earth, what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? Will we cooperate with each other and give a unified front so that none of us are taken out by this foreign enemy? So that's how I think about this. And I think others should think about it that way as well. And that could be the source of what brings us all together in peace and harmony forever going forward. The common enemy to well, us that, all. The enemy of my friend is my enemy. So yeah, yeah that's yeah. that'd be great if what you just said happened. And I'm just gonna mm -hmm. shut up now and just bask in that because <laughs> you know, that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> right. Right. And I think also uh, there's got to be a version of that, because if I'm fighting someone else and they're my enemy, now there's an enemy to us both. So my enemy becomes my friend and we can both fight the common enemy to us both. Right. See, that's 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 the thinking that would have to unfold. here. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? What could be more alien to the universal aspirations of our peoples than war and the threat? And more secure for you and your children. I couldn't help at one point in my discussions with, privately with General Secretary Gorbachev, when you stop to think that we're all God's children, wherever we may live in the world, I couldn't help but say to him, just think how easy his task and mine might be in these meetings that we held if suddenly there was a threat to this world from some other species from another planet uh, outside in the universe. We'd forget all the little local differences that we have between our countries, and we would find out once and for all but we really are all human beings here on this earth together. Hello. Oh, you're trying to give me a hint that there are aliens. <laughs> no, I'm trying to tell you I don't know. Oh. But if we were visited someday, I wouldn't be surprised. I just hope that uh, it's not like Independence Day. Yeah, right. Maybe that it's, a, you know, a, a conflict. Well, now we have friendly Maybe aliens. the only way to unite this incredibly divided world of ours they're out there, we better think of how all the differences among people on Earth would seem small if we felt threatened by a space invader. That's the whole theory of independence. You're right, you're Everybody right. Everybody gets together and makes nice and, you know. You and Bill O'Reilly would be hiding in a bunker together. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Bill O'Reilly, he'd be the every mean thing he ever said about me. That's the thing I don't care, look at that. <laughs>
But if one of, only one of them is correct, that means everybody else is lying. So how do you how do you discern which one's telling the truth or not? I mean, just on the premise of logic, it gets very very suspect. One of the ways you can start to get people to doubt is the things that they have shown. You know, as, as you saw in the movie, all of these secular researchers saying they're deceptive, they lie to people, they're deceptive, they lie to people. But people never questioned it during the experience. Certainly after when you say, were you told this? Were you told this? And they go, yeah. I said, but that's not true. And that's not true. Doesn't that make you a bit suspicious? I've met literally hundreds of people who've had this one and that they're lying in bed and they see a black cloud or entity in the room and it moves or hovers and they lose control of their voice and they're paralyzed. The skeptics try to you know, explain it away as sleep paralysis. Um, and people call on the name of Jesus, for example, and even something like that uh, stops. And I myself had that same experience, and I haven't told many people this as a baby Christian. I think I'd been saved a matter of days I didn't know anything about spiritual warfare and I'm lying in my room and I had this experience, but I was so excited about my newfound faith. I managed to squeeze the words out, Jesus help me. And I was being pressed against the bed and choked and it stopped in an instant. We have testimony after testimony after testimony and Guy Malone, a researcher in Roswell, New Mexico, he says, well, think about it. If these really are advanced entities flying millions of years across space with that type of technology, why would they be frightened of the name of Jesus, a supposedly deceased religious figure? Joe Jordan, who's catalogued over 400 cases now, uh, has uh, recently, if you like, been promoted. He lives in South Korea as the national director for MUFON, Mutual UFO Network, the world's largest UFO investigative group. He, as a non-believer, first stumbled upon this. And he said, so what is it about Christians and aliens don't like? That was what he thought. Uh, and then he realized, like all other researchers who've come to study it, and if they're open enough to, to take the evidence for what it was, they realize they're not dealing with aliens, they're dealing with spirit beings. And he said he came to understand that the Bible was the only thing that it could explain the spirit realm adequately. Only permanent solution is the authority of the creator. Because if we are talking about fallen angels, deceptive spirit beings, who created them? You know, the creator of the universe created, created everything. He's the only one that obviously can have authority over those beings. We're all looking for meaning and purpose in this world. And if, you know, if, a, if an alien's traveled millions of light years across the universe, and, and I'm not making light of this, but he's come into your room and he says, and I've chosen you, I love you, you're special. You've suddenly found meaning and purpose in life. And that's why it alters people. And that's why often they don't question the experience. They are not benevolent aliens visiting us from a galaxy far, far away. They are deceptive, supernatural entities emanating from another dimension. Any serious expert will tell you that these are what they would describe as interdimensional beings. John Mack, in fact, a Harvard, uh, former professor of uh, psychiatry at Harvard University, says that these were beings that were should have stayed in the spirit well, he used that term, but have crossed over into ours and he kind of described them as having an intervention with humans or something like that. So that's called the interdimensional hypothesis. It's a physical realm that has the ability to manifest in our limited realm. Maybe can deceive our eyes, it's very powerful. And of course, if that's the case, as I've described, they can physically do things to people.